to sell out on the other side of the country. How, how does that feel? Can you describe it? Well, we've never had that before. The last tour, we did 22 yeah. dates and had one sold out. It's kind of like a big jump up for us. You don't want to say it? <laughs> <laughs> just the mic holder. He was just like refusing to take it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie. This is Audio Live with The Mank and I'm joined by the wonderful Delight. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, firstly, do you want to describe the music that you guys make? That is the hardest question, I think. Uh, indie, pop, boy band, <laughs> hair. <laughs> Any dance moves in that? Somebody did make a dance move to one of our songs called 1989. 1989 Shuffle, I don't know. Nah. Do you know what? None of us know it, though. No. We need to get her. She was in London. It's, so. a, bit, it's a bit like the in-betweeners move they do in the... Yeah, yeah a bit yeah, like... Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, similar, yeah. similar vibes to that one. So you guys, you met at college. Yeah which I always find is a wonderful thing because when you become friends as a band and you have this like long relationship, something comes out of the individuals when they're put together in their friendship. Do you agree with me? Do you feel like you are a more resilient band because you were friends before? I think it's more honest. I think the music's a bit more honest. I think we're more honest between ourselves as well because we are like, you know, actually friends rather than colleagues. I guess it, like that relationship takes away the vulnerability that some people might find, you know, when they're approaching music and they're right going, check out this idea. I think we're way more critical of each other, but in a good way. It's not negative, it's just honesty. But then also when you're friends with people for ages, you, you can be a bit mean with your mates. That's fine, it's sort of funny in that way. And um, I think we're very lucky to have that. Yeah. You've just finished in your UK tour, massive. You've got one more show to go. What is the best thing about being on tour? There's a lot of beer. Playing to different cities and having people know our words outside of our hometown is always just kind of a crazy feeling. So yeah, you're turning up to Edinburgh. We didn't play to many people, but the people who were there knew every word to pretty much every song. I think we came out of it more satisfied because you almost feel more endeared to the people that have trekked out the way to go to like a less populated show than one that's, you know, like sold out and kind of maybe looks a bit more trendy because it's like, because it's sold out, it's just nice to, to get out and meet everybody who's got their own stories to share with the music and stuff, it's really good. have sold out most of your tour, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You're playing at the Eagle Inn tonight, you've got two nights at the Eagle Inn, and places like this are so special in Manchester because we are a city that's a huge heritage in music and live music. What I've seen to see with bands, they love these smaller venues, even when they're playing like the Apollos and you know the Academies and all the other big venues. What is it to you that makes these smaller venues so special? More intimate. When it's like a, like a tiny room that's just packed, you know that everybody's there to see you. It feels so much more like a connection between us on stage. When you do play to a big room, it sort of feels like you're so distant from everyone. There's like you, and then there's a wall, and then there's the crowd, and it's hard to get that feedback between them. But like, as you can see the stage here, it's so close. There's gonna be someone stuck like there tonight. They'll be right in your face. That for them will be such a great experience and also a great experience for us. You can bump into everybody, speak to people before or afterwards, like it's it's dead nice. What you're just saying there, you love the small venues, you would say no to the Cortinas if they asked you to support at Heaton Park. That's what you're saying, no? <laughs> Two thousand Okay, you're what you want, okay, just making sure you know that. What do you take on tour with you? You're like your luxury item, as it were. I like to bring me little travel curlers. <laughs> to, um, just just a bit of a bit of a luxurious kink in the hair, you know, and because you know you're sleeping, you're not washing your hair every day. You don't, you don't often get the chance. Um, sometimes, sometimes a little bit of heat goes a long way. <laughs> have you had a deeperish moment where you've made like a massive demand that people have met? Yeah, like your fussy rider or whatever, when you can just like, ask whatever you want. What's the one on them? Uh, a thousand brown M and M's. It says it in our rider. It does say it, and nobody has ever done it ever. Shock. We're, wait, we're waiting. Shock. 2022, big year for you. Just talked about your tour, mini album. 2023, what does it entail? What's the future? We are writing an album. In terms of live side, just yes, yeah, port tours, uh, festival slots, and then like a nice little writing period as well, and get get some new stuff in in the works. Yeah. What's on the bucket list for delights for your lifelong career? Apollo. To play Manchester Apollo would be incredible, absolutely incredible. I'd love to do that. Obviously, there's like Glastow and like Reading and Leeds and like all of those, but I think they're everybody's. But for us, Apollo would be yeah. mental. If you would suggest to suggest a band that uh, our Manc listeners could listen to or should be listening to, who would that be? Marusia. 
Yeah, I would go Maruja. Uh, hello, I'm not saying anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> I would go Mind's Idol. They're a great band from Sheffield. I mean, we love them. I would double up and double down on Maruja. Yeah. Big fan. One of my favourite bands. I would say Stan the Collective. Yes. New band coming out. Where do delights like to drink? Where do you get your tipple around Manchester? Favourite place? The Orion in Withington. Or... Weatherspoons, or <laughs> yes, which is just a great spot. We always go there after we do a gig, a headline, we'll always go there for a night out afterwards. Um, good vibes, nice people. <laughs> Ready to play a little game? Yeah. Okay, right. There's a theme running through this game, um, and hopefully you'll get the gist of it. Which band in 1990 had a chart-topping hit that featured the lyrics? Oh, easy. Easy. Be like. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what confection that consists of oh, yeah. sugar and starch? What's it called? Turkish. Pardon? Turkish. Turkish delights. Yes. There are three cities in the world that has the same name. These cities are in Arkansas, North Carolina and Maryland. I can't believe I remembered that. What is that city called? All together? Manchester. Delights! Delights! Yeah. Oh God, you like it. Thank you so much for talking to the mic today. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>